Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. Germany's losing streak continues, this time at the hands of the world champions France. Where did Germany go wrong? How were France able to fight back? Don't worry, here are the interviews, we've got you covered. So on this edition of the interviews, we're gonna break down how France beat Germany. So before we get into today's video, don't forget to give our video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Click the bell below if you want daily notifications regarding our daily organic unfiltered soccer slash footy analysis. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. In today's brief video, we're going to break down the first half and see where Germany went right. And then look into the second half and see what changes France made to fight back and eventually end up winning the game. But first, let's get to the lineup. So you look at France, no real surprises, 4-2-3-1. Giroud up front, Griezmann just in behind him with Mbappe and Matuidi out in the wide areas Pogba and Conte in midfield the only real change for them was Kimpembe moving into center back then we get to Germany more of a tactical change 3-4-3, 3-4-2-1. Up front, they went with Nabri. Just in behind him, Sané and Werner. Out in wide area, Schultz and Carrere. And in midfield, they went with Kimmich and Cruz. So first, let's get to Germany and see what they did right to take the lead in the first half. So when we get into the first half, we look at Germany and the way they're set up. 3-4-3. Three, three. Basically, France would kind of drop into two banks of four. They would have Griezmann and they would have Giroud a bit higher. They would have Mbappe and Matuidi kind of tuck in narrow. And we look at their shape from that perspective. We have to look at the fact that Germany want to get their wide players forward. They're trying to ensure that Sané and to ensure that um, Werner don't have to drop back. But they had a lot of the ball because France weren't really looking looking to press them high. The back three were able to play out. There were times where we saw Giroud and Griezmann try to block off uh, Ginter and Sule. But besides that, Hummels often had free range to break forward into their half. And one of the aspects of where they were really getting forward past France was a, it was the basic notion that they were able to dispossess them. And France were making a lot of mistakes. You look at even the buildup to the opener. When we look at the way they're shaped is that the wide players are able to push forward. Matuidi often came out to stop Kerr. No one really came out to stop Schultz. And we'll get to that in a minute because Mbappe is a bit higher. The midfield against the midfield and the front three, more so very narrow, allowing the wing backs to get forward. We're stuck in that middle, looking to find pockets of space, looking to run at the fence. And they were pivotal throughout the first half when we look at it like I said it starts with mistakes from France the first one being Kempembe playing the pass into Pogba Pogba's dispossessed due to some pressure pressure from Kimmich and allows Sané to break forward Sané drives at Kempembe pulls the ball back hits his hand penalty is awarded to Germany crew scores we look at another opportunity where it's simply um, a throw in into the box um, Mbappe decides to offer an outlandish back heel what ends up happening there is that Sané now is able to pick up the ball and what Sané ends up seeing is that he sees the midfield bank he sees the center back bank and he's able to slide a pass between both of them which allows Nabri to break forward Nabri does step forward but what happens there is that Lloris is off his line quickly and he clears his lines but again another opportunity for Germany to break forward and that was a big warning sign for France and that is not what they wanted we look at a corner kick that's cleared and what happens here is Kimmich is able to bypass Pogba and what happens here is France is already caught out on the counter-attack they have Matuidi back with the center backs and look another ball from Kimmich slid into Sané now it's a 2v1 because Varane comes over and you have Werner breaking in but what happens here is that the cross is just a bit over hit and you have Lloris pushing out and Werner's unable to really get to it in time and that is another opportunity that France is just bypassed through quick transition from Germany and then we look at one more opportunity it's a simple throw in it's a simple squared pass from Pavard to Conte and what happens there is that he is pressed instantly and when he's pressed what happens there is that is Cruz picks up the ball Cruz ends up playing it to 
to Nabri, and what happens there is that Nabri is able to run at the center backs and he slides it to Werner in left half space who attempts to try and pull it back when he should shoot but you think about those chances Germany are breaking forward France are making mistakes but again it stems to France making mistakes Germany not making the right decisions not taking their opportunities lacking a reliable goal scorer with an eye to find the net and then we look at the other aspect of what Germany were doing is the sense that they were able to really get the best out of France is 4-4-2 because they were looking to exploit the space in behind Kylian Mbappe. They were constantly playing passes out to Schultz and what happened there is that it often left Povard forced to kind of pick him up. We look at one play here where the ball is shifted out to him. Povard steps in. Werner ends up making a darting run into that space which forces Varane in there. Then the pass is back. Then you see Nabry come across and what happens there is that Conte did very well to track the run and his pullback was blocked but it Again, that was an avenue where they were really finding space down that side. We look at another opportunity, and this is kind of sums up what Germany were all about. It's them a bit more narrow, and what happens here is that as they do play out of that side, what happens is that eventually we saw... Um, Griezmann move out to the right hand side for Mbappe and when Griezmann moving out to the right hand side what we do see is that the ball comes out to Schultz but what happens here is that Sané is holding back Povard. So what happens there, he stays narrow, the ball goes out, he eventually has to step. Griezmann does track as well, but what happens is that he pokes the ball into Sané, into that space, but Sané's shot is blocked and it's deflected into Loris. And again, we're seeing the signs of them just finding those pockets, using an exploiting space down the left-hand side. There's also another opportunity where, again, from the left-hand side, where we often had Matuidi driving in into that space to press from that angle what happens here is that he's unable to do that as the half wars on they drop off a bit deeper Hernandez makes that run what happens here is that you see Werner move into that space with Kempembe tracking him cross into the box it goes through the box but again they're finding space in behind the wing backs because they're stretching the pitch and because they're not having players track the runs Germany were really looking like the better side probably should have scored more goals France really only had they only really looked good when they were playing long balls to Giroud, who did a good job holding it up, trying to link play with his teammates. Pogba was often from deep trying to clip long balls in, but that wasn't really working out. And their two main chances really stemmed from just direct play in transition. Mbappe picking up the ball from his half, bypassing Cruz, seeing Giroud drop off in ahead of Kimmich, plays it into him, and then gets the ball back. Giroud links with him behind Hummels. Hummels tracks, cuts in, cuts out. His cross is cleared by Ginter. You look at another opportunity where the ball is shifted out wide again. It falls to Hernandez. No one really tracking him. He's able to run past Kimmich, run past Kerr, and then run past Ginter. And as he moves into the box, he, what happens there is that we see a cross played in and Giroud comes to the front post, but he guides his effort over the net. France not really creating much opportunities, being exploit, exploited down their right-hand side. Neither Griezmann or Mbappe could provide Pavard with much protection. And then we look at Germany finding, forcing France into mistakes, getting chances on the break, but not converting them. So now let's get to the second half and see what changes France made to get back into the game. So we get to the second half, we look at France's change, they move to a 4-3-3. What happens there is that it allows them to have that numerical advantage in midfield of 3v2 with Matuidi offering more energy. We saw Pogba and sometimes Conte shifting out into those wider areas when Matuidi pushed forward to get on the ball in the half spaces. That forced some defensive work from Werner and Sané. But France really struggled to really create chances going forward throughout the half. They did have a lot of the ball, but when Germany dropped off into the 5-4-1, it did allow the fullbacks to push forward and that was key because it pegged back Germany's fullbacks because what happened was that now the center forwards were narrow. Griezmann was dropping off trying to get on the ball and Mbappe and Giroud were often very central and what happened there is that their main intention was to kind of press from the front. They had the forwards step into the center backs but what happened was that it was very disjointed. The midfield bank never pushed forward. We saw the, the wide players do step up a bit higher and close down much more aggressively. 
but France's pressing didn't really affect Germany in that sense. When we look at the goals and the chance that they do score, a lot of it stemmed from just great movement and the fact that Germany weren't closing down and they were pulled out of position on several occasions because now they had their attacking players much closer together and making great movement. We look at the ball shifted out to Hernandez. What happens here is that we see Giroud push out Ginter. Again, no one pressing Hernandez. Pass is played in. Both Sula and Mbappe don't track it well, but what happens is that we see Mbappe run off the center back and he's able to break free on goal. Neuer comes off his line. Neuer makes a big save. Again, warning signs for Germany. We look at another opportunity. This time it's Pogba shifting the ball out to Hernandez. Carrera this time gets really close to him. You have Giroud in the box. You have Griezmann looking to poach in. What happens there is we have Matuidi making an intelligent run in between Ginter and Sula. And what happens there when he makes that run, it forces them back to track it. And when the cross is played into the edge, Griezmann now is free to nod the header towards goal. It's a superb header. Neuer is culpable. He should do better there. His positioning wasn't good. But again, the movement of Matuidi making that run in between ensures that neither Ginter or Sula can't attack the ball. And they would win it against Griezmann. But here they weren't able to because of Matuidi's movement. And he nods his effort in the back of the net. We get to the the winner, what the build-up to the winner. And what it does stem from is, again, Hernandez picking up the ball. But we see Mbappe drop off a bit deeper to get it. Now you want Carrera to get onto it. But what happens is that Griezmann darts in there as well. So now Mbappe is able to make that run across. And what we end up do seeing is that we see the run here from Giroud again, dragging out the center backs. Here you have the midfield bank. Matuidi's already making the run between Werner and Kimmich from deep. And what happens there is as he makes that run from deep, we end up seeing the ball end up played into him. And when the ball is played into him, what happens is that now you have Hummels trying to come across. And as Hummels comes across, he ends up making the challenge. Matuidi falls, penalty awarded, and Griezmann is able to convert. But when we think about it as a whole, and as we get these players back into the position, Germany did struggle to cope with the movement of France. France, a lot of its individual brilliance, a lot of its well-worked moves, but Germany also had their chances. When we do break it down, a lot of the same things that Germany did in the first half worked in the second half you see Schultz get the ball what happens here is that Sané ends up making a run off Kempembe but no one tracks it and he doesn't see it so he doesn't play it what happens is that Nabry drops into that space there the ball is played into him Werner ends up making a run between the center backs and the ball is played in but it's a bit over hit and Lloris is able to pick it up that was one opportunity that we did see from them another one stems from the fact that you have Hummel step forward he plays plays the ball into Schultz. What happens there is that when they move into the system with the three three-man midfield, it forces the shuttlers to come out at times to the wider players. You see Pogba come out to Schultz and what happens there is that we have um, Werner drop off, play the pass into Werner, who he dropped off to Varane. And what happens there is that again, we see him play it back to Schultz and then the pull back into the box between Pogba and Povard falls to Sané, but he guides his effort wide. We look at one more opportunity from a simple throw-in. We have Nabri drop off, we have Kempembe come to him, and we have Conte. And what happens there is that he back heels the ball into the path of Leroy Sané. Now you have a break there. You have Povard and you have Varane, and then you have a run coming in. But what happens is that he doesn't make the he doesn't make the pass into Werner. He cuts out, and what happens is that he ends up being dispossessed and shrugged off by Conte. And when you think about it, he had another opportunity, poor touch. And then the other avenue, we saw Nabri, we saw Carrere play balls into the behind for Werner and behind Hernandez. What happened? A shot, a tame shot on goal that goes wide. Him playing a weak cross into the box, and then him being dispossessed by Kabembe, which ended up him leading to him pressing Kabembe and eventually leading to a shot on goal that Lloris was able to save. But when you break the game down as a whole, the first half, Germany had chances
France on the break. They were forcing France into mistake. They were hitting them on the counterattack with their speed. The same thing happened in the second half, but they were poor in the final third. Poor decision making, not clinical enough. And when you look at France, they changed their system in the second half, were able to find plays down the left, and the movement of the front three and Matuidi really fooled their back line, and they were able to execute penalty and a superb finish from Griezmann, who will st steal the headlines. But this could be down to Germany not finishing their chances. But let me know what you guys think. Is now the time to sack Joachim Lowe? What could Germany do to get things back in order? And what about France? Once again, not playing to their potential, but still finding ways to win. Is that good enough? Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget, I upload videos every day. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And that was your daily dose of the interviews.